Hello everyone, it's Jack from Visual Effects. So today I'm going to be showing you how I made the cobwebs and the dust for this render. So first we need to look at the scene and see that we just need to change the roughness values because because under dust um, nothing will be shiny. So let's just quickly just change the the wood. This is a Visual Effects up wood, so just change it to probably not that much. We want a little bit of light still, maybe a bit more than that. 1.5. Nope. 1.2, there we go. And then the same for the photo scan of this mining lamp. So we'll just half the specular and the roughness, we will times it by five or six. So that generally makes that look a bit better. With our photo scans as well, if you feed the albedo into the bump and add a gradient ramp as well, it kind of helps make a little bit more detail. So that's just another little little quick tip. As for the dust, we'll start with that. Um, if you download the dust pack, it does come with a Cinema 4D file with a redshift shader and an octane shader. And it also comes with just the models and then just, just in case you're using a different software and you need to just make the shader, but I'll quickly go through making the shader because it's really simple. Um, so dust pack and spider web collection is what we'll be looking at in this video. So dust models, you just get seven in that little pack. And we'll paste in. So they're already set up with the octane shader. So these are the dust meshes. Quite cool quite simple little shapes, gives you a variety of shapes, some that you might not use at all and some that you will, depending on your look that you're going for. So we've copied and pasted that into our scene now. As for the shader, let's look at that first. So Octane Dust, it is pretty simple. All we've got is we've got a basic noise that's quite big, just for a little bit of variation and just fed into the bump. And this scale might need to change depending on the size of your scene and the size of your dust and the image. It just adds like, so when the light hits the dust that it adds a little bit of extra dimension. Um, the albedo, just a simple gray color, no specific here, like the, probably the lighter the better. Uh, specular, not too crazy. Roughness, all the way up. And then Opacity, you can reduce this, I wouldn't recommend it, but I have done it just to help kind of make it look a little bit more translucent. Just, but yeah, not necessarily needed. There's nothing in the normal. The IOR is 1.5 and then the transmission is just set to diffuse. This is the most important setting and it's quite high up as white. So that means that light will pass through it and look like it's being absorbed. So that's pretty much the basics of this shader nothing complicated at all and that can be set up in any renderer. Without further ado, let's just go to our Octane Scatter and we'll just drag all these dust models into our scatter for now. It's not going to look great from the start so we're just going to pick surface and then we're going to select our mine lamp and drag that into the surface. So what we'll notice is that it has populated but because it's so tiny the, this is the beauty of this. It has to be small, otherwise it doesn't look very realistic. Um, you'll see these shapes appear. So let's just crank this value up, times it by 10. So we can already start to see that it looks pretty cool. But what I don't like is I don't like the triangle shape. So now is a good time to get rid of some of the dust that you don't necessarily like. So what, to do that, we can just turn some off and it'll keep creating different variations as well. So you get to see it in real time, which is great. I like this more fluffy looking dust, but we can add a few back in if we need to and scale up and make it a little bit bigger and stuff for like that. But for now, that will be enough. Um, and it is a bit crazy on the render engine. It's already like three gig. So let's just times that again. So now we're getting something that looks pretty cool. So that's that's just one solid block, but we need to add just a little bit of variation. So to do that, we will add an effector to our scene. We'll go for a shader. 
and we'll go for a random. And then we just want to drag those both in here. And on the random, just turn the position off. And on the shader, we want the scale to be potentially a bit less than that. This is good for mold as well, actually. And um, two five. And we want to add a noise. We can scale that up a little bit and clip these so there's a bit more variation going on. Maybe a little bit smaller. And the other thing which is super important so it doesn't look as uniform is the rotation. Now, some people don't change all these axes, but to be fair, because it's so microscopic, if you do, it kind of creates even more variation. So if we just put 12 on everything for now, or a bit more. So they're all still facing the same way, which is not good for now. So what we need to do is we just want to go back into our random, and we'll change the rotation on that. And there we're starting to get something that looks pretty cool. And again, we can test to see if we like it with some of the squared pieces in. The other thing we can do is just create a bit more variation in the, the um, scatter itself. You can constantly keep playing with these as well to make sure they're doing everything that you want. Let's create a bit of variation on the scale. So we want 0 0.3, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And this is in the random shader too. And then let's just go back and make this back to normal size or 0 0.8, 0 0.8. What you will see is that hair would actually work as well. But the good thing about doing it with models is you've got a bit more flexibility on creating custom shapes and specific curls and curves. So that's a bit crazy at the moment. So we'll just knock off a zero maybe. Nope. So I only like, I prefer the fluffy ones to be fair. So I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna go back to just turning the um, square ones off. Depends on whether you want a lot of dust or just a little bit of dust. But if you look at the fluffy ones, it just looks pretty cool. Just because it feels weird, let's just duplicate this. And attach our surface to this as well. So we've got dust on the surface because it's just confusing me. So with spider webs, this is really quite fun. Um, all you need to do is, if you've got this pack, Awesome. I'll show you how to do that now. So you just create a plane. And let's just turn off the dust for now. So we'll do three by three. For one of the webs. So for full transparency, some of the webs have been generated using generative AI, and then some of them have been and painted. The ones that are a bit more complicated in terms of having angles, the AI was quite good at generating the normal looking webs, but the ones that like clump up in areas, kind of had to just draw those in Photoshop. Um, here's a little bit of how I did that. So as you can see, it's just, a, just drawing loads and loads of lines thin it's better with a tablet because the opacity is different. And then once you're happy with it, just applying a few effects like noise, um, slight blurs, even letting some of it cut out just to make it look a bit more varied and the light will catch it in different ways. And then that's pretty much the hand-drawn ones in this pack. What you'll get is you'll get just the webs only. So these are some of the AI, AI ones and then some of the hand-drawn ones are like these ones, so they're, they're pretty cool. 
and then there's enough variation. There'll be pro I might add to this pack as well over time, but like there's pretty much enough to get started with things. But then also it comes with PBR textures. So for example, you've got a normal map as well attached and roughness if it's, if it's ever applicable. You can kind of set it for the whole thing though, but it just might give you a bit more variation in some of the worse areas. Um, and then there's an ambient occlusion, which I'm, I want to do some studying on potentially using this as a dust map around the actual web itself. So if dust is caught on the web, but I just, I don't know how I'm doing that yet. So I don't know if it's as simple as inverting it and just creating a slightly transparent material, but I will do an updated tutorial if I find a way of making a dusty web. It's just normal PBR materials. Um, don't necessarily need a lot for this sort of scene. So all I've got here is the base color web fed into a rough um, a roughness, fed into the roughness and a nor the normal map fed into the normal. With the base color, it tends to be a bit duller than some of the original drawings or scans. You just need to knock the pair up to get the web. And then it is as simple as just dragging that web onto that plane. And where it becomes quite fun, a bit tedious, but fun. Well, this might be bad, bad um, advice, but everything that you know about topology, forget it. So just feel free to just bend polygons and make them weird. just to help create a look that you like the look of. Make sure that all the points of the web are actually attached to something so that they're not floating in midair and feel free to just go crazy with it. No one cares and no one's watching. Yeah, just, just add variation. So the normal map might help on certain scenes to help just make it look a bit more 3D, I guess. Really depends on the lighting that you've gone for as well, though. Just be conscious of um, cutting through certain areas as well. So that's cool for that web. Again, if you think, ooh, I want it to be a bit brighter, you can just crank up this. Let's go ridiculous, and it makes it more visible for more cartoony looks, I guess but it's actually subtle and stacking that makes this look quite cool. Um, so from a lazy point of view, let's just duplicate this and put a different shader on. So this one's quite a messy one, but again, it's quite nice. This one can look really quite cool if you do if you're clever with how you position things. Obviously the more polygons as well, the better for like bending it around things, but try not to get too crazy for something that might just be a subtle detail. So we'll just tie that in there, pull this all the way up here. Want that to duck in with that. As you can see, you can literally be crazy with it. Spiders obviously know what they're doing. I don't. And then this can either be just pushed towards the back or kind of masked, I guess, as well. And this one, I think I might make a bit brighter too. So 1.5. I feel like that actually should be in. And that should be cool. And then again, just duplicate. Think about where it's contacting as well. Obviously scale it up and down to suit the scene. This one feels like it should be more subtle. When I first made these ones, I didn't think these ones would work that much that look like literally touch and fill the screen, but they're actually my fave. 
So it's just, it's weird how you think it wouldn't work. So it's not looking as good as the um, product render because it's spent ages doing that. But uh, if we just have a look at that now from the camera angle with the dust on. It's looking pretty cool still. Okay, so uh, something worth noting as well. I actually, when I did this render, I had the dust on and I was moving the um, webs around. So I wasn't actually aware that I was getting this problem of intersection. If you've never come across that, um, you can either literally be proper on it and place these so neatly, but if you want to be lazy and bend it into the model like this, um, one quick fix would be to use the, I can never say that word, the ray epsilon, and then just tuck that in and then it just gets rid of any intersections. It's good for fine details and hiding things away. Um, if you're going to use dust, you probably don't have to worry about that, but let's just see what it looks like together now. So here's the original scenes, just make it a bit brighter. Um, if we just look at the dust, that's pretty cool. And in terms of webs for this one, I did do the big one on the bottom again, distorted it a bit like crazy. It's actually not very neat at all, but it looks great from far away. So I guess we started with nice looking dust. Actually, you can see with this one that it's been a lot better scattered and it just looks like there's more detail going on. A lot more scale variation, which is nice. So started with the one web, then I moved on to this one. So I just filled that little gap up there. And then filled in behind that web even more because it's really cloudy there. Then put one on the front. So this one here, again, that's quite shriveled up. Looks quite cool. And then one final one there yeah, and one there as well. So it can look pretty cool. In this scene, you can clearly see that I've used um, a darker shader, um, gone more crazy with the rotation. Scales varies between one. Same again with this. I've gone a bit more crazy with this one. So that's kind of why it looks nice and fluffy around these edges. As always, uh, thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one.